the things that separates levels of player is their ability to finish points, especially when they get a high ball, right? You don't see a ton of lobs happening at the pro level. I'm not saying no lobs, okay? But you don't see a ton of lobs at the pro level, the high levels, because they are so good when they get those high balls, putting them away. So why don't we do a really quick tutorial on some things you might want to know about being able to hit a good overhead smash. You ready? All right, when we're talking about a good overhead smash, what we're talking about is being able to hit this ball consistently and with power. After all, that's why you're up there, to get high balls that you can hit down. If you can hit down, you can hit hard. So let's look at a few of the fundamental technical skills here. First is how you set up for the ball. A sideways setup is really important because if you're sideways, that will allow you to turn through the shot. This is a lot like throwing a ball, and people who throw balls well tend to get sideways. If you think about it, most balls you hit with other objects, you get sideways so you can rotate through the shot. So a sideways setup is important. It's also important to use your legs here. You can see here, as I come down a little bit, that's so that you can drive upward with your legs. You can generate power from the ground up. So once you're in that sideways position, you want to load up by sort of bending down a little bit with your legs and then pushing back up at the ball. Speaking of going up to the ball, this is a throwing action. And it's not so much like you're throwing a ball forward, it's more like you're throwing the paddle up at the ball. You're accelerating upwards, right? A good throw is very much like a good overhead smash and vice versa. So you wanna really develop a good throwing action to be able to generate that power. Where you make contact with the ball also matters. This is called your impact point. And when you hit an overhead smash, you want your impact point to be as high as you can reach and slightly in front of your body, between your body and the net. This full extension here is going to make it easier to generate speed, which again is the whole point of hitting this shot. So you're going to want to have that high impact point that's low in front. You're also gonna to wanna to pronate as you hit this ball. And pronating is really just turning. It's turning your hand. So if you have a continental grip, kind of like you're holding a hammer, then as you go up for the ball, you can see here how my hand and wrist turn, and then you get that pronation. It's a little bit like uh, if you were looking at your own palm, and then you turn to high five your friend, that would probably be a pronation. And pronating is really important because you can see here as I use my hand and wrist and forearm, that is a good way to generate power People who stand up at the net with a different kind of grip, like let's say an Eastern forehand grip, they're more likely that they're just gonna bump the ball or sort of push the ball forward. You see this is very little pronation here, right? This is not really what you want. You're gonna get the ball over the net, of course, but it's gonna be hard to get power. So using that hammer grip, that continental grip, means that the edge of the paddle will be coming forward and that will force you to turn your hand and use your forearm to pronate and that's where that power is gonna be. For some of you, that may feel a little bit strange, it might take some practice, but I'm telling you, if you can get this pronating feeling down, you are gonna get power fairly easily. So there you go, those are the elements of a good overhead smash. Use your whole body, use your legs, get that pronation, make sure you reach up nice and high. Good luck. Not too long ago, I was in Red Deer, Alberta for some pickleball coaching work, some pickleball coach education work, actually. And I went to the outdoor courts, wanted to check them out, wanted to highlight them for you, but they were closed and I was sad. So I got into my car and I drove because there are some indoor options in Red Deer. If you're not familiar with Red Deer, Alberta, well, Alberta is out in the western part of Canada and Red Deer is a small city there, 100,000 people. It's right in between Calgary and Edmonton. And boy, oh boy, is Red Deer like a sports city. They hold lots of events. And uh, look at this beautiful, it's called the Collegiate Center. It's this multi-sport facility run by the city of Red Deer. And uh, this is a great place for us to have our coach education training. Before we show you some of that, just look at some of these other facilities here. There's soccer, there's gymnastics, of course, there's hockey, there's rock climbing. There's all sorts of really cool facilities here. And I love when cities will do this, when they will invest and they'll put the money and time and effort into making these facilities that are great for so many people who want to do so many different kinds of things. The rock wall I thought was really cool. That was busy all weekend long. So finally, here we go. We find the multi-purpose pickleball courts. These are not the nicest pickleball courts you've ever seen. Um, there uh, leaves a few things to be desired, but you know what? They worked. And you see this commonly. These are badminton nets that just get lowered. Badminton courts, of course, are the same size as pickleball courts, except for the kitchen line. And this worked out just fine. And this kind of flooring, um, you know, it's nice and squishy on your feet. If you're going to be coaching all day long, 
it is pretty comfortable on the old back and legs. And here you can see these players. This was like a rec play situation. And how cool is it that you get to play pickleball underneath this rock wall? I think it's pretty neat. Anyway, these are some of the people who were taking our level one instructor course and uh, just out for a little bit of a hit. They were nice enough to let me do some of the filming here before we got going. And uh, yeah, that was my trip to Red Deer. It's a pretty nice place if you're ever in the Edmonton or Calgary area. Of course, there's major airports there. And you want to go check out the Red Deer Pickleball community. is a really a vibrant community. they got those beautiful outdoor courts that are open in the summertime. And of course, the indoor courts here at the Collicut Center. Check it out. Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. Oh.